same as well. The topics I'd like to discuss with you today is your brief background just to get to know who you are, your career progression in the Army, your arrest and torture at the NIA, and uh, your detention and trial and the impact of that detention and trial on you and your family. I hope you understand. Just to start with, I'd like to know what your name is. My name is Babu Jaha. Where do you live? I live in Sunchu Alaji. What is your date of birth? I was born in 1976, February. When did you attend your primary and secondary education? I attended Farafanya Primary School in 1982 to 1988. Proceed to Farafanya Secondary Technical School in 1989 to 1993. Thereafter, I came to join my brother here in Serakunda, staying with him until 1996, when I joined the Gambia Armed Forces. On May 12, 1996. After your training, what rank were you given? I was a private soldier. Where were you posted after your training? What? Where were you posted? Can you please give me your career progression from the time you joined the army till date? Yes. I joined the army on 12, on 12 May 1996. After having my basic recruit training, um, I was posted at Yunum Barracks on the supply and transport. Can you please give me a brief of your career progression from your first posting till date? Yes. I passed out on August 38 and later been posted to one infantry battalion on the supply and transport. I was there in 1996-97. I was posted to the Gambian Navy. From 1997 to 1998, I came back to Yundum Barracks on the supply and transport again. That was in 1998. In 1999, I was posted to one infantry battalion as a driver to the battalion. From 1998 to 2001, I was posted to Army headquarters under Colonel Ndur Cham as his driver. From there, what did you do? I was working with him from 2001 to 2004. I was deployed to Darfur, Gamkoi 1 for peacekeeping mission. I came in 1995, I think November. Then I was posted to the headquarters again on the Nur Cham until 2006, 21st of March, when he was accused of military coup. And that's the time my posted end at the headquarters. And can you please tell us how your postings ended at the headquarters? In 2006, when Dulcham was accused of military coup, I was arrested on the 3rd of April. That is the end of my posting at 
Gulf headquarters. What were you arrested for? I was arrested in connection of um, the fuel coup of um, Colonel Nur Cham. Can you please tell us what your work was with Colonel Nur Cham? I was the driver to him. At that time, what was your rank? I was a lance corporal. You said you were arrested in connection with the coup plot of Colonel Ndur Cham. Yes. Where were you arrested? I was arrested at the army headquarters. Was it a coup or a foil coup? It was not a coup to my own understanding. Can you please tell us about that? Coup. Who arrested you? I was arrested by um, Araji Martin with a section from the State Guard Battalion. Sorry, can you recall how many people came to arrest you? Um, roughly 12 people came to arrest me. 12 soldiers with fully armed. Where were you at the time of your arrest? I was at the headquarters. Who was Alaji Martin at that time? Alaji Martin was a state guard personnel. And the guards that were with him that came to arrest you, where were they from? They all came from the state house. What is Alaji Martin's current position now? He's a general in the army. Can you tell us about your arrest? Yes. Alaji Martin came to the army headquarters with a, a section from the state guard battalion when they, come, they, uh, when they came, they asked for me. I came out, so they told me that I'm needed to the NIA. So there I joined them in their vehicle to NIA. Were you forced in any way to follow them? Yes. Can you please describe how? He just come and told me that Join these people, we go to NIA, you are needed there. What time of the day was this? It was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You were eventually taken to the NIA, right? Yes. Can you tell us what happened there? When they took me to the NIA, I was, I went to a room where I met the <coughs> panel members, the interrogation panel members. I was given a seat. Then that's the time questions start coming to me about the coup of Nurcham. Can you please tell us about the constitution of that panel? Um, the panel is 20 or more people. And the section that arrested me from the state guard. What was the constitution of the panel? Were they all from the military or? You have the NIA personnel there. And some members of the Gambia Armed Forces from the State Guard Battalion. Upon appearing before the panel, were you charged with any offense? Yeah, later I was charged. After, I think, two weeks of my arrest. I was charged with Three count. 
Let that is, that is concealment of treason, concealment of conspiracy. Uh, the other count I forget about, I forget it. Going back to that particular panel, did you recognize any of them that were seated in the panel? You indicated that there were about 20 people in the panel. Yes. Can you please give us the names of the people you recognized at the panel? I can fully remember Baba Saho. He was a member of the panel. Fodia Bari also was a member of the panel. There was one Bojang, um, I forgot his name, he's from the army. He's also among that panel. Um, the late Musa Jame Malia Munko was also a part of the panel. And Alaji Martin also was there with the panel. Just go over the names that you've mentioned and you will please tell me their ranks at that time and their positions. Baba Saho, what was his position and rank? Actually, I don't know his position. I just know, knew him there as and I personal who are part of those who are interrogating me. What of Fode Bari? Uh, Fode Bari also, I don't know his position during that time. Which outfit did he belong to? What? Which security outfit did he belong to? I think Fode was called, I understand that Fode was called later, you know, to be among the members of the panel, you know, because of that coup. Do you know the security outfit that he was from? Whether he was from the army or NIA? Uh, for the body was once working with the NIA. What of Bo Bojang? You've already mentioned that he was in the army. Uh, Bojang was in the army. Do you know his rank? He was a lance corporal. Alaji Martin at that time, what was his rank? I think Alaji Martin, if I can remember, I think he was a warrant officer during those days. Can you, recall, can you recall what kind of questions they were asking you that day? Yes, I can recall some of the questions which they were asking me on that day. Can you please tell us? Um, first of all, what they told me is, me boy being working with Nurcham, they want to use me as a state witness. I told them that state witness, how can I be a state witness on something which I don't know nothing about it. There I was told that in court they will tell me what to say. And I will be given a statement to go over it. Then in time of court, that is what I will say. I told them that actually I cannot talk about nothing that I don't know. As far as you can recall, who appeared to be leading that panel? Um, one called Hydra. I think he was the deputy NI at that time. Fair in complexion tall and tough. You did mention Alaji Martin as well. Was he also part of the panel? Alaji Martin was also part of that panel. Well, he was there. Can you tell us what happened during your interrogation? Um, they are forcing me to say something which I don't know. 
concerning about that who plot that um, so-called who plot so they asked me about the people who used to come to Ndurcham I told them that in Ndurcham office many people come there the people who used to come to Ndurcham office I cannot remember all of them because it's a public office whereby all the military officers, senior officers, and junior officers, men and women, come there. I cannot pinpoint anybody saying that he do come to Ndurcham office because everybody come there. Even they themselves who are asking me such a question do come there. So I was told by Malia that I'm in support of Ndurcham. That's why I don't want to tell the truth. I told him, sir, that is the only thing I know. You mentioned that they were forcing you to say some things. Now, how were they forcing you? They were pressing me throwing different questions on me that I cannot answer because I cannot answer a question which I don't know. So later, Musa Jame Malia, he get up from where he was seated, going around, holding one picket of cigarette with a collar nut, He split the colonel and threw it into his mouth, and trying to pass behind me. After lighting his cigarette, when he was trying to pass behind me, that is the time I had a very heavy slap on my cheek. There I jumped up and fell down, rolled under the table. So there, the section which came with Elijah Martin, those soldiers, they grabbed my, my legs, trying to pull me out. I was also struggling to stay under that table. So when they pulled me out, there I started, there, there they started beating me, kicking me with their combats, hitting me with their rifle boards, stamping me. I was beaten mercilessly. As far as you can recall, who was the head of the group that was beating you? Uh, the group that was beating me came with Alaji Martin. That is the section from the State Guard, including um, Malia, that is Musa Jame, the late Musa Jame. He's the one, he's the first person to slap me. After slapping me, it seems like, you know, he triggered them. All of them jump on me, start beating me so mercilessly in front of the panel. Can you recall what they were using to beat you? They were kicking me with their military boots. On my face, my ribs, my back, my head, they hit me with rifle bolts. In fact, they cocked their rifles. Maria himself cocked his pistol, put it on my neck here, telling me that failing to comply, they will kill me and nothing will come out from it. How long did that beating last? It lasts for four hours, from three o'clock until seven o'clock in the evening. Were they saying anything to you while beating you? Yes. Can you tell us what they said and who said it? Malia, that is Musa Jame. He told me that I'm in support of Ndurcham, I'm related with Ndurcham, that is why I'm trying to cover up. I don't want to tell the truth. 
he also told me that because of my surname is Janha, I have a relationship with Abdul Sara Janha, the former Secretary General uh, during the regime of Sadaud Kerba Jawara. Did any of the people around that you mentioned, Alaji Martin, did he do anything to stop the beating? None of them do something to stop that torture. What of beating. Bamba Saho? None of them. Fode Barry? Fode was just sitting at a corner, keeping quiet. He never said nothing. Did all these people that I mentioned, did they participate in the beating? Fode never participated in my beating. But the rest, moreover, the state guard personals, they did beat. Alaji, sorry, did Alaji Martin participate in the beating? You know, it was very rough. Alaji Martin was there. He was part of those who were struggling on me. He and Musa Jame, they led that beating. What do you mean by they led that beating? They were the people who, they were the senior officers at that time, senior military, you know, personnel at that time, who can order the beating. I was first hit by Musa Jame, then all of them, all of them, all the military personnel there, come surrounding me, all of them were beating me mercilessly. You mentioned that the beating lasted for about four hours. Yes. Did you sustain any injuries as a result of the beating inflicted on you? Very serious injuries. Can you tell us about it? Yes. When I was hit by Musa Jame, when he slapped me, after jumping from that seat, when I fell down, that's the mark here. I yeah, just burst because I fell down on the tiles. It was a concrete tile. Then blood started coming out because I fell down like this. While they were hitting me, my mouth was bleeding, my nose was bleeding, and my eyes, and some part of my body. After hours of beating you, and you've all already told us that you had several injuries on your body, did you receive any medical attention? Negative. I have never received any medicine about that beating or from that beating. What happened to you afterwards? Afterwards, I was taken, I was uh, Hydra, that is the former uh, deputy of, deputy NI director. I think he was the former deputy of, deputy director of NI, NI at that time. He ordered them to take me to mile two, central prison, and threatening me to come for me at that night if I fail, fail to comply with them. How were you taken to mile two? I was escorted with the state guard personnel in a vehicle to mile two. Can you tell us what happened upon your arrival at mile two? After arriving at mile two, I was taken to an office um, that is the director of the prison's office, um, David, David Collis' office. There I was stripped. What I mean by stripped, that is where I, you know, they told me to lose my jacket, my belt, my beret, the judges that I was tightening, my watch, my ring, all my belongings. That is where I remove all and leave it there. There they record my arrival. That they recorded my arrival. From there 
I was taken to maximum security wing number five with barefooted. No slippers, no boots, no nothing. I walk from that point um, to maximum security wing block number five. That is why I was taken to a cell, one man cell. Just going back to the panel, was the CDS at that time part of the panel? Um, if I can remember, um, General Tamba was the CDS during those days. Sometimes he'll just come flash and go. He did not stay there permanent, but he do come there and go at times. Did he say or do anything while he was there? Negative. Going back to mile two when you arrived there, you said you were placed in cell number five in the maximum security wing. Can you tell us the condition of that cell when you were put there? The condition of that cell very bad. The cell was just a very small cell. To describe that cell, the length is just like roughly two meters. The width is just one and a half meter, very small. If I raise my hand like this, I'll touch this wall and touch the other side. When I measure the width also, it's just like one and a half meter. That is the cell I stayed for nine years, four months, and some days. Going back to the time you arrived at mile two, can you recall what time it was? Um, I think it's from seven to six, to seven to eight, something like that. It was very late. Can you tell us what happened to you afterwards? I was thrown into that cell. I don't find nothing into that cell, just a concrete slab with a chamber pot. That is this Armante Minus pot. That is the one I was given to use if I feel like, you know, urinating or certain things. That's the place I have to put it. Did you remain in that cell that night? I was very, very unconscious. And that night, actually, I cannot remember much because when I was thrown to that cell, there I don't know where I am at all. How about the following day? Can you recall what happened to you? Yes, the following day they came for me again. I cannot remember the time, but it was in the afternoon around, let's say, um, from 12, 1 o'clock. I was taken back to NI again. At the NI, I was taken to an office. They give me a statement, a written statement, which I have never wrote by myself. I was told that I have to sign that document. Failure to sign it, they'll come for me at night time and kill me for that matter. And they were very serious. So there I put my signature on that paper. Were you forced or beaten during this process? 
during this process, I was not beaten, but I was threatened to be killed. Failure to sign that document, I was threatened to be killed. Can you recall the people that were present at this point? Um, the section that came for me from the State Guard Battalion plus um, Alaji Martin, Jagai, the one called Jagai, I think he's Koli, Koli, uh, I can, if I can remember his name, I, I can fully remember the surname, the surname is Koli, but the nickname is Jagai. He was the one responsible for our transportation from mile two to the to the to NIA. You mentioned that Alaji Martin was part of the entourage that took you from mile two to to the NIA. Yes. Did he do or say anything to you during the process of signing that particular document? Um, during the process of signing that document, they left me with those soldiers. Raj Martin was there, former Sergeant S.T. Job. I don't know his rank now. I think he's still in the Army. I heard that he's a captain. He was also there, S.T. Job. They were the people who were transporting me from mile two to the prison. And afterwards, what happened? Afterward, I signed that document, and they take me back to mile two. Did you see them again? Yeah, I do saw some of them at times. People like Jagai, that is Koli. Can you tell us how? In what circumstance? Yeah, sometimes they do come to us, start interrogating us at mile two, taking our belongings, You mentioned us. Which us are you referring to? Um, the people who were accused of, you know, coup plot. Can you please mention their names? Uh, that is President Colonel Bunja Dabo, um, Colonel Per Mendy presently in Davo. Um, Major Yaya Dabo, Major Wasa Kamara, Captain Faring Sanyang, um, Cobral, the late Cobral Sambaba, Private Alai Ying, now Warren Officer Class 2, including myself. Plus, former accountant general, that is Ali Job, Amadi Sow, Tamsir Jase, Honorable Demba Dem. Ali Ulo, Ustasi, Ustasi, that is Usman C, his name is Usman. I'm Serin Omar Fal. All these people you mentioned, you stated that they were in connection with the alleged fall coup of Colonel Ndul Cham, right? Yes. And you also mentioned that they usually come to interrogate you while you are at mile two. You say what? You mentioned that they come to interrogate you while you are at mile two. Yes. Can you tell us what that interrogation entails? Yes, sometimes they'll come, you know, take two or three people outside to that, you know, David Collis office, started, you know, asking you certain questions. They did it to me and others. Like, sometimes they'll just pick a name, 
start asking you about, especially me, it's happened to me for several occasions. They'll give me a name from the senior officers of the Gambia Armed Forces, started asking me their connection with Ndurcham. I do tell them that really I don't know their connection. Yes. Can you tell us the composition of the group that usually come? Who were the people that usually come? Was it the same set of people led by Araji Martin or was it different people? Yeah, it's a different people sometimes from the State Guard Battalion and from the NIA. Was anyone tortured during this process? Uh, tortured like beating? Yes. No. But torture mentally. We are tortured mentally during that process because they will be telling you certain words which is not actually nice to us. Can you please tell us words like what? Uh, Sometimes they will insult us. Sometimes they will tell us that we are tribal, that is why we decided to overthrow um, the regime of Jame, which has never happened. The interrogation you are telling us about, how long did it last? Sometime for one hour, sometime 45 minutes, they left us, they take us back to our cells again. Apart from you, that you were beaten, you've already told us that you were beaten, apart from your own personal torture, did you see any injuries with the people that you named? Yes. I saw injuries in all of them. Number one, I saw injuries with Colonel Bunja Dabo. His hand was broken. His eyes were swollen. For Colonel Permendi, I saw scars in his body like a bone. Those marks were on him. Yeah, Davo also, his, uh, his, one of his eyes was almost destroyed. For Farin Sayang, I saw in his neck something like they were about to slaughter him. For Ali Job, I saw his mouth bleeding. I can fully remember this from the people I mentioned. What do you think was the cause of those injuries? It was cause of torture, beating and the like. Were you arrested the same day as these people or did they subsequently meet you at mile two? They were arrested before me. I was arrested together with Alaji Ning in the same day. Alaji Ning was working at the state house. I was working at the headquarters. But we met, I find him at NIA at the same time. The time of my torture, when they were torturing me, Alaji Ning was present. He was there watching at me. In fact, he was threatened by Musa Jame. I heard him telling Lightning that, you see how Babu is suffering? You are the next person after Babu, if you fail to comply. I can remember that they told Lightning that. I can fully remember about it. You've also told us that you were kept in a one-man cell. How did you come to see these people and their injuries later on? Yes. Sometime, like every morning around 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock, 
they'll open us to go and pour our chamber pots at the toilet. Like if you spend the night, the urine which you put into that chamber pot, in the morning you will be open to go and pour it inside the toilet. So that is where we met. Everybody is being escorted by a prison officer. He will just come and put the chamber pot um, around the door of the toilet because we do come, you know, in a different direction. When we met there, you know, we enter the toilet one after the other. You will go and pour your chamber pot. <laughs> Was it? Go out. The other person will also come, pour his chamber pot was it and go out that is where we normally meet and see each other other than that if you are with somebody whereby your cells are opposites you can peep from the window that small window you just look measured at your face level like this um when you stand up the person also stand up from his cell you can be able to see each other through that small portion During the first days of your detention, were you given any food? Any what? Food, food. Yes, we were given a very bad food. Just for survival. It is just to survive. But food is very, very, very bad indeed. Can you please describe what you had for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Okay, the breakfast, they will give us what they call pap. It's a sort of porridge. I don't know how did they make it, but very terrible porridge, really. Very cold, water on top of it. And they'll put it at a very, very dirty basin. Very dirty basin. Because... The basin, these plastic basins, where they put our lunch, they don't clean it properly. That is the same basin they will put the pap and give it to us in the following morning. Were you eventually charged before a court? Yes, I was charged and been taken to civil court. After mentioning at the civil court, two, three adjournment, I was removed from that civil court and been taken to a military court, that is the general court martial, where I was sentenced and sent to prison again for, nine, for ten years. Can you tell us about your trial process? Were you represented by any lawyer? Yes. We are given access to a lawyer that if you can find a lawyer, if you can pay a lawyer by yourself, you, you can get a lawyer. If you cannot have your own lawyer, then the government will provide a lawyer for you. I decided to take my own lawyer by selling my own compound just to go away from that case which is actually hurting me up to today when I was a junior officer for that matter I sell my compound to pay a lawyer so that that lawyer can be able to defend me because I cannot defend myself so that I'll be able to go out of that, that, that case. Unfortunately, I lost the compound and I was sentenced for 10 years in prison. I stayed at the prison for nine years, four months and some days. Oh, and my back. lawyer was Nene Cham. Sorry. Going back to the trial process, did the state call any witnesses against you? In my case, 
there was no witness against me. Nobody ever stand in front of court and mention my name. But we had nobody ever mention my name in court. And my statement also was thrown away. Later I was sentenced. My lawyer applied for no case to answer. With all that, I was sent to prison for 10 years. Can you recall who the judge advocate was? The judge advocate was Emmanuel Agim. He's a Nigerian judge. Were you jointly charged with the people you mentioned earlier? Or were you separately charged? Yeah, there was a separate of charge sheet. I think I can fully remember that, you know, five of us, five of us, that is myself, I'm Colonel Permendi, um, Abdul Karim Jah, that is Major Abdul Karim Jah, present Major, with Alaji Nying, uh, Emeba, former Minister of Interior, and the late Sambaba. We were charged for concealment. Each of us was charged for three counts. Concealment of treason, concealment of conspiracy, and the other charges, I forget it. Did anything strange happen during your trial? Very well. Can you please tell us about it? We were not actually treated fairly. And during the last day of, our, of the court, I can fully remember, the judge advocate mentioned in court saying that the trial is over today. Some of you will be very, very happy with their families because they will be going home. But others will see it otherwise. Let them, do, let, let them just take it with good faith and know that, you know, it's God, God's decision. Later on, there was a massive phone calls here and there by the people who escorted us. That is Jagai. The other one, I forget it. I forgot his name. He passed away now. He was also among those who were taking us to court. They were the people who were assigned to us to take care of us during the court process. During the course of that phone calls, um, the phone was given to the uh, president of the court marshal, that is um, General Sergeant Fofana. When he received the call, he bent down trying to talk to the judge um, advocate, that is Emmanuel Agim, said something to him. Later, um, the judge advocate announced that the court should halt for some time before the final decision will be taken. That is why they went out, they went to a room for nearly two hours. Uh, when they came back, all of us were sentenced. And that was the 10 year sentence that was given to you? That was the time they gave me 10 years sentence. Can you tell us what happened afterwards, after you were sentenced? We are handcuffed and outside the court to the vehicle from there to prison. We are in the prison for nine years, four months and some days. While you were in detention, while you were at mile two, did your family have access to you? Yes. My family, they have very little access to me, very, very little access. Imagine every month they have to see me once, 25 minutes or 30 minutes. 
Lara Pal when they come to visit me, they will put a barrier between me and my family whereby I cannot even shake hands with them. I cannot even touch their body because there is something between me and them. For only 25 minutes or 30 minutes, they go. Sometimes we sit for six months without our families to come and visit us, especially when they say that, you know, there is a program in the country or because of security reason, our families will not be given access to come and see us sometime for three months, sometime for six months. Yes. Did you remain in the maximum security wing throughout your detention period? Yes, me personally. I stayed in one man's cell alone for nine years, four months, and some days. I never enjoy joining people in the big cells. I never, ever enjoyed that. I was always in one man's cell throughout my prison career. While in that cell for nine years, did you have the opportunity to be going out and interacting with your fellow inmates, or were you confined to yourself? Yeah, during the first years, we were confined. We were not allowed to go and see our fellow prisoners until after four years. That's the time we are starting to allow, you know, to be going out and, you know, mingling with other, you know, inmates. But during the first years, we are not having that opportunity. We stay in the cell for 19 hours. That is every day. That is, they will open us by 8 o'clock in the morning. Half past 11, we all go inside. Until 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock they will open us. 3 o'clock in the afternoon they will lock us again. We will be there at 3 o'clock. From that 3 o'clock until the following day, 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. We will be open again to go and take bath and pour your chamber pots. For just like 1 hour 30 minutes. Then you go in again. Was Were you provided with any beddings or a mosquito net perhaps to help you out with the Yes, mosquitoes? later part I was given a bed this sponge small sponge with a blanket and a mosquito net. That is the later part of my time at the prison. Can you please give us a time frame of when that was? Um, after some years. So for several years you were just lying down on that plank of wood? You are just like that. You've been in detention for a period of nine years. How has that affected you psychologically? Yes, I'm really affected. Because if I think what I lose are the compound that I sell to get a lawyer after losing that compound, sometimes I feel very bad of that psychologically. Yes. How about your family? How were they faring throughout this period? My family, actually, they were also suffering. Was there my wife went to join his parents with his children in a very small place in his father's house. There, they don't enjoy it at all. How many children do you ha did you have prior to you being 
Uh, okay. during, the time, during the time of my arrest, I was having three children. But after my six months at the prison, my wife delivered a baby boy. He didn't make it four at that time. You did not see your son from the time you were arrested till the time you came out. That was when you saw him, right? Um, my son came to visit me when he was just, when he was old enough. How was that like for you? It was very terrible. Definitely. But sometimes at the prison, you forget certain things. Your mind is always to go out and get your freedom. That is what you normally focus on. You forget everything behind and you know, focus on how are you going to go out. Yes, me personally. Can you tell us what led to your release? Yeah, I think in 2015, I was just in the cell. Later, I heard that, you know, it is announced that, you know, the president has given us parole. Uh, the, all the political, political prisoners and other common prisoners, some of them were, we were among those who are given a parole to be released and go home. When we were released, we were taken to a room. There, we were told that the president has released us, but with conditions that we have to stay out of politics. We should not join any political gathering and the like. And anybody who have a case reported to a police, you will be sent back to prison for 10 years, period. That was the condition imposed on us. Who relayed this condition to you people? The former Minister of Interior, that is Usman Sonko, um, with the Director of Prison, former Director of Prison, that is David Coley. These are the people whom we met after our release. They are the people who related this message to us. After your release, were you reinstated back into the army? Negative. I was not, we were not reinstated in the army. Until this present regime. Because me, I was in Senegal for some time. And after coming of this regime, I was called back in the army again. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Jaha, for answering all of my questions. Mr. Chairman, the witness is yours now. Thank you very much, Council. Thank you very much, Mr. Jaha, for your testimony in our effort to create a historical record uh, for violations that occurred during the period that we are covering. We have been required under the, uh, the agreement to provide victims opportunity to uh, relate their own um, accounts of what happened. And this is what you came for, to provide those accounts that are here. Thank you very much indeed your testimony. Uh, Thank you, sir. Commissioners, do you have any questions to ask? Yes, Bishop, you have the floor, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Babu Janha. Um, you said you were given presidential pardon um, on conditions and that it was during this regime that you were reinstated. Now, what happened to uh, your services 
um, when you were unlawfully um, sent to prison? Um, are you compensated for those years by this current government or not? Yes. When I was called back in the army again, I was not compensated. I was reinstated. Reinstating me, I was giving back my salaries, only salaries, but not compensation. No, excuse me, you said you were giving back your salaries. Um, for the period that you were unlawfully in prison? Or? Yes, for the period that I was unlawfully in prison. I was given back my salary, but no compensation. Thank you very much, Imam. Imam C, did you ask for the floor? Go ahead, please. Thank you, Babakar. At the time you were going through this situation, were you married or not? Wow, man, I'm on Nyati Dom. I had three children. Jamano Bobu. At the time. Why be made me prison be I'm for drum be anywhere. But when I was in prison up to six months. Feka suma jabar mango ba on me ne kon beer. At the time, my wife was. Then sila am drum bu bur. She gave birth to a son. Mui ni nanti dom legi. And so I had uh, four children. Mom nakala muzi yao linga ne linga ne kifo fumbaru. Mom sasa somba si fumbaru sana luko. So how was uh, how were things with her? You wow, wife, uh, while you were in prison, well she. Ava sana buba. She had to suffer a lot. She because. Because man, ma ko ne ko ni support. I was the one supporting her. Time bima ne ka ag mom. When I was with her. Why bima de me prison? But when I was in prison. Dega dega mom more on the support bopam. To be frank, she was the one supporting herself. Ag halemi. With her children. So kon me di na si mom torop. So things were difficult with her. Very difficult. Thank you very much. If there are no further questions, would um, you have any concluding remarks to make, um, uh, Mr. Jangha, before we close? If you do, you have any concluding remarks to make? Do you? Did you say again? Would you have any concluding remarks to make? Do you have any final words to say? Okay, sir. No, none. Thank you. Thank you very much again uh, for coming to the commission and uh, testifying before us. Council, what's the scenario for the afternoon? <laughs> Sorry to disappoint, Mr. Chair. The scenario is that there are no further witnesses for today. Uh, but uh, we would compensate for that by bringing in, hopefully, three witnesses tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's a very good um, promise. Uh, to have three witnesses tomorrow. Hopefully, Mr. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you very much um, uh, for that. And uh, if there are no further points um, to raise, we will... Um